In some of the other lessons, you've seen us work with layer masks, but this lesson is completely dedicated to working with them so you can really see how understanding them and being able to manipulate layer masks gives you the most control over your work. Now, typically, a layer mask will fill the entire document size unless you make a selection first. So let me show you how making a selection first works. I'm going to use this tool here to make a selection. Let's increase the brush size with the right bracket. Actually, let me decrease it now. Everything, all the wall area, like so. Now, if I wanted to not get the hand, probably what I would do is decrease the brush size, click on my minus button to deselect those areas, like so. And then I might also want to add this little bit of a door, doorway, like so. So I'm getting pretty much everything except for the stairs and the child. Now, if I go to create an adjustment layer, which will non-destructively edit my selection, let's do Vibrance. If you look at the mask in the Layers panel, we will be applying some adjustments to the white areas, but not to the black areas of our mask. So the Vibrance will increase the vibrance of the image, and the saturation will bump up the uh, intensity of the color. Now, I think just pushing it all the way to the end looks kind of cool, so I would leave it like that. Anytime you have a mask or even an object on a layer, you can use that to reselect the selection. So for instance, if I put my cursor here on top of the layer mask and hold down my command or control key, my cursor changes so that if I click on the mask, I can reselect the selection. So now if I wanted to do some other kind of adjustment layer to the opposite side of the selection, all I would need to do is select inverse, and then I can apply another adjustment layer. So for instance, if we wanted to do a hue saturation to just the stair part of this image, we can modify the values here. So let's say I wanted to um, make this kind of like a green color for the stairs and bump up the saturation a bit. So that's really bright and then make it just a little bit lighter, just ever so much lighter. I don't want to see those grainy dots, so maybe just like one or two, like so. So now you can see that the mask is actually the inverse of my original. Now notice that there's a little bit of a halo effect going around the hand and the elbow. That's easy to clean up. All we need to do is paint with black or white with our mask selected. So I would probably zoom into those areas to get nice and clean edges. Make sure the mask is selected. Grab your paintbrush tool. You can modify the brush size. And we might have to do the same thing with the other mask so that the uh, effect kind of goes right through. I would probably use a mask with a little bit of a soft edge. And let's grab this mask too, and now we'll do the same thing. Uh, and we'll paint with white to reveal. Of course, you take your time and really get in there for some fine precision. But as you can see, it's better than it was before. So let's zoom back out. Now if we want to, we can reselect that selection and create another adjustment layer. Adjustment layers will go on top of whatever layer is selected. So if I knew I wanted another adjustment layer on top of the hue saturation, just need to make sure that I select that layer. So for instance, if I wanted to make the walls a little bit darker, I would do a levels adjustment layer with my selection. And then all I would need to do is modify the sliders. So just darkening those down ever so slightly. And then I could even uh, reselect the selection and fill the next thing with some kind of pattern. The pattern can be anything you like. So maybe I'll do something with bubbles, make it really big so he's walking into this crazy bubble room. And again, you can modify the mask by painting on it, and you can modify the blending mode, do anything you like to it, something like that, and then bring down the opacity. You see, by uh, adjusting the mask, you have so much more control. Like, I might really like the way the bubbles are falling on the left wall, but not like the way they're falling on any of the other walls. So I'll select my mask, and you don't always have to paint with black or white. You could also paint with 50% gray. The value for that is 80, 80, 80. And then with your brush tool, just changing the brush size, 
all you have to do is paint. It's almost like painting with opacity, like so. But of course, you could adjust the opacity while you are painting up or down while you're working. So just like your adjustment layers, your masks themselves are infinitely editable. If I decided at a later time that I didn't want that grayed out area to be there, I could come back in with my black and paint it back the way it was before. Or erase it completely, paint with black to erase, paint with white to add it back to my mask.